This is Twice Crispy, and you're watching Twice Crispy. This video is all about how to run at Shack. We'll start this one off by quickly going over the basics of how to loop efficiently, then go into the more nuanced tips for running at Shack specifically. Once you know how to play Shack efficiently, you'll pretty much be able to use this as an infinite loop. There's a ton of different creative ways to loop at Shack, and I'm sure I don't even know all of them, but I will show you some of what I know, and hopefully you can come up with your own creative ways after watching this. All right, let's go jump into the looping. The first thing you want to get good at here is running while you're looking behind you and also having your face buried into the wall. The best way to do this is if you're running clockwise, hold S and D, and if you're running counterclockwise, hold S and A with the camera panned behind you. It's going to feel counterintuitive to hold S to run forwards, but once you get the hang of this, you'll understand why. The same applies for if you're playing on a controller too. Pan your camera behind you and hold your movement stick down and then either 15 degrees to the left or to the right depending on which way you're running. You always want to have your A and D key or your movement stick on your controller pointed towards the wall. The best part about this is you don't even need to practice this against Shaq, you can do this against any flat surface in the game. Alright, now that we know how to run the outside walls, we're going to look at some obstacles that might be on our way. Each Shaq is a little bit different and the Ormond one in particular has a big divot in the middle of the window. You're going to get stuck in it if you don't change up your movement patterns as you go past it. Right as you're approaching the window, you want to have your player running completely backwards just for a split second. So if you're on keyboard, the way to do this is let go of either A or D and just hold S for just a fraction of a second. Or if you're on controller, just move your stick straight down real briefly. The next fun obstacle we'll look at is if there's a hook at one of the corners. The idea is pretty similar to running past the window, but in this case you're going to exaggerate the movement just a little bit. So if you change your movement up for about one tenth of a second, that'll get you past the window. In order to successfully get past the hook, you're going to have to do this for about a quarter second. So again, let go of A or D and just hold S for about a quarter second or hold your stick straight down on your controller for about a quarter second, then go back to the movement you're already doing. What this will do is pull your face away from the wall to get about to the middle of the hook, and then you'll slam back on the keys, and then you'll press your face into the middle of the hook, and you'll curve right around it and back into the wall. How many times have you seen someone do this, where they vault the window and shack three times in a row, the entity blocks it, and now they're either forced to throw the pallet or leave? This is honestly one of the worst habits to be in if you want to extend chases by use of Shack. So instead of making this mistake, let's explore some other options and different ways to play the window at Shack. Alright, so here's our Shack. Yeah, I know, it's pretty crappy, but so is the one of the game. So the blue things are the doors, the little red sliver is the pallet, and the pink thing, obviously the window. We've got three primary loops we can take when going through Shack using the window. We've got the short window loop, which is the window to the pallet door back to the window. The most common, the medium window loop, which is the far door to the window back to the far door. And then we have the long window loop, which is the main door to the window all the way around past the pallet door back to the main door. So there's a reason that the medium window loop is so popular, because it's like stupid powerful against the killer. The problem is, if you abuse it, you're gonna lose it. Is that, a, is that a saying? I think we just might have made up our own saying here. So let's say you vault the window when the killer is right in the dead center between the window and the door. By the time he vaults the window and gets his feet on the floor and he's able to start chasing again, you're gonna be at roughly this position. That's a pretty strong position to be in. Next up is the short window loop. In itself, this is a pretty unsafe loop, because if you try and vault this three times in a row, there's a high likelihood you're going to take a hit from the killer. Aside from that, it buys a lot less time than taking the medium or long loop. Another problem with this loop is if there's a generator in the middle of the shack, it can be a little tricky to get a fast vault off. The best thing about the short loop is comboing it with other loops. So going from the short loop to the medium loop and doing a figure eight is pretty strong and can waste a lot of killer's time. Lastly, I'll talk about the long window loop. 
For any of my fellow life abusers out there, you probably already know about this one. This loop definitely works best if you have life or 99 sprint burst because you're going to have to go a long ways around the building to get back to a safe spot. The best thing about this loop is that it can be really unexpected from a killer point of view. Most of the time the killer is going to expect you to take the short or the medium, but rarely do people run all the way around the outside of the long wall on the shack. Depending on which map you're on, you'll be able to see through the holes in the walls on the long wall of shack. This will allow you to better play mind games with the killer because you'll be able to see the red stain through that long wall. Okay, so we're going to address the elephant in the room here. When do you drop Shack Pallet? How do you play Shack Pallet? When's a good time to drop it? When's a good time to keep on running? When's a good time to take a hit? I think a good rule of thumb here is that if you're healthy and have no hook states, just take a hit. But let's say we've at least got one hook state and we're injured. It might be an okay time to drop the pallet if need be. We've blocked our window because we vaulted it too many times. So now we're running towards the pallet. Uh, what do I do? I say just drop it. Hopefully this isn't still at five gens because that's going to suck for you and your team later on in the game. But if it's going to prevent you from getting out of the game or getting your second hook state, I think it's a smart move. So let's look at how to play the inside of Shaq. There's basically two determining factors that'll cause it to play a little bit differently. That's gen versus no gen and pallet up versus pallet down. If there's no gen in Shaq, you pretty much play it normally. This is the base Shaq. Run it like normal. Use your windows, greed the pallet, you know, whatever. Cool, but now things change a little when there's a gen in the middle of the shack. Getting a fast fall off becomes a little bit trickier from certain angles, but there's definitely a trade off there. You can use the gen in the middle as a mini loop to see if you can bait the killer into swinging and get a whiff. That should buy an extra second or two so you can vault the window safely. Now let's look at shack pallet up versus shack pallet down. This is probably pretty apparent to most of you, but Shaq becomes a lot more dangerous to play once the pallet's gone. There's no reason for the killer to respect that doorway anymore, and it's a one-time deal to put distance between you and the killer. As you can see here, I'm pretty much taunting this Mikey that's been chasing me around Shaq for a while. And then he pops tier 3, and I don't really have an option other than to throw the Shaq pallet because I don't know if he's going to mini mori me or not. This is one of those few circumstances where it's okay to throw a shack pallet early because I did it at five gens here, because otherwise I might be dead and that would leave my team with one less player at four gens. Last thing we're going to look at here is when to leave shack. Generally, again, I think there's two reasons why you would leave shack. Uh, you've blocked the window or you're trying to avoid throwing shack pallet. These two things are super straightforward. But I think there's also a lot of things that could happen in the game that would cause you to stay in Shack longer than you really want to be there. Examples of why you wouldn't want to leave Shack right away is a charged up nurse, a blight that's rushing that you don't know where he is, and traps from Hag or Trapper. If you're stuck inside, try and use whatever geometry you have on hand. Whether that be a gen in the middle, a basement, or even using the lockers for a locker tech. This could buy you and your team some extra time and maybe even let you escape the shack and get out of the chase. If you stuck around till the end of the video, I just want to say thanks so much because as a small time YouTuber, that really means a lot to me. I sincerely hope that you learned at least something today and that you'll come back and check out more of my videos in the future. I'll see you in the next one.